So we move on now to Surah Al-Baqarah. And there's a very interesting hadith from Umar al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. And Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, you know, before Islam, he was a drinker. Actually, many of the companions were drinkers. And Umar al-Khattab, you know, when he came back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he sincerely wanted to make sure that he was leaving behind anything, you know, that would be objectionable and anything that he had to, you know, that he had to do away with for the sake of Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Umar used to sincerely ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clarify certain matters for him. And many of us know about the relationship between Umar radiallahu anhu's dua and certain verses of the Quran, particularly um, the ayat about alcohol. But, but let's look at this narration in particular, which is narrated in Sunnah Tirmidhi. Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, he used to make this dua. He used to say, Allahumma bayyinana fil khamri bayana shifa'an. Oh Allah. Make this matter of khamr, of alcohol, intoxicants, make it as clear as it can be for us. Give us clarity on this issue. So when he made that dua the first time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verse 219 in Surah Al-Baqarah. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا That they ask you about khamr and maysir, they ask you about uh, intoxicants and gambling say that you know there are some beneficial things there are there's good and bad in, in drinking but the harm far outweighs the good but it still didn't prohibit khamr at this point so Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anhu when that verse was revealed he started to make the same dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so he stood up and he said Allahumma bayyinana fil khamri bayana shifa'an oh Allah you know, give us clarity on this issue of intoxicants. I sincerely want to know. I'm not trying to make it halal if it's really haram. I really want to know if this is haram for us all the time or at certain times. So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the 43rd verse in Surah An-Nisa where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, la taqrabu salata wa antum sukara, hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun. O you who believe, do not approach the prayer while you are drunk, um, until you know that which you are saying. Now, why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, Hatta ta'lamu ma taqulun, until you're sure of what you're saying? Because what ended up happening is that a group of Sahaba were praying, and the companion that was leading the Salah was drunk, and it was Salat al Maghrib. So he started mixing up a bunch of verses and jumping from surah to surah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited a person to come to Salah while they were drunk. So Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, at this point now, the companions would drink either way before Salah so that they weren't intoxicated when they came, or they'd start drinking after Salat al Isha. So Umar radiallahu anhu once again made dua. Allahumma bayyinana fil khamri bayana shifa'an. Oh Allah, make this matter of khamr clear for us. Make, clarify it for us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the 91st verse of Surah Al Ma'idah. إِنَّمَا يُرِيدُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَنْ يُوْقِعَ بَيْنَكُمُ الْعَدَاوَةَ وَالْبَغْضَاءَ فِي الْخَمْرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ وَيَصُدَّكُمْ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَعَنَ الصَّلَاةِ فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the shaytan wishes to deceive you and wishes to bring about enmity and wishes to ruin you essentially through liquor and, and intoxicants and gambling. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and he seeks to divert you from the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ Like, are, is this enough for you to quit now? Are you guys going to stop now? Are you going to avoid it now? Umar radiallahu anhu, when this verse was revealed, he said, انتهينا, انتهينا. We're done, we're done. You know, I'm not going to have to make this dua anymore. Now, to, to add on to this story, some of the Sahaba then, they came to the Prophet وسلم, and they said, Well, Ya Rasulullah, what happened to our companions that, that you know, died in battle? Some of them died as shuhada. And some of them died in their beds, but they were righteous people and they used to drink. What happens to those people now? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the next verse, verse 93 in Surah Al-Ma'idah. amanu wa amilu salihati junahun fima ta'imu. That there is no blame on those who believed and did righteous deeds for that which they consumed in the past. So they're forgiven. Now, what I really want to point out here, which is really significant, is that Umar bin Khattab radiallahu anhu, was looking for truth. He wasn't looking for a loophole. He wasn't looking for convenience because his love for Allah and the Messenger وسلم, was greater than his love for alcohol, was greater than his love for that drug. And the proof of that as well is what's narrated in the Sahihain, in the two Sahihs that Omar actually stood up and he said, O oh people, 
the prohibition of khamr is clear. The prohibition of intoxicants is clear. We're not going to sit there and say, well, only if it came from this source or that source. He said, whether it comes from grapes, dates, honey, wheat, or barley. He said, khamr is what intoxicates the mind. فَهَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُنْتَهُونَ So will you stop and avoid it completely? So a lot of times people come to me and say, what about this drug? What about that drug? You know, it's not technically alcohol. If it intoxicates, it is khamr. And we should have that same level of sincerity that Umar anhu had, which is to want to know the truth so we can follow it, not to want to find a loophole so that we can continue to obey our desires. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that sincerity and that pursuit of truth as well. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. See you next time. On